to the Proceedings Podcast. We are at the Grand Sierra Resort in Reno for Tailhook 24. This is day two. It's Friday. Things are already ramping up. Um, I've got uh, two great guests. Uh, both have been on the show before. So first is Commander Kristen Finley. She is the president of the Tailhook Association. She's also the commanding officer of the West Coast Super Hornet Fleet Replacement Squadron VFA-122 in Lemoore. And uh, Lieutenant Tugboat Jabelli, uh, who is a proceedings author, he's a Super Hornet pilot, recent Top Gun grad, and uh, at the West Weapons School at uh, NAS Lemoore too. So great to have, and you're on the uh, board of directors of the Tailhook Association recently. Yeah. Yeah, it's indeed. Welcome. Thank you. All right. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Tailhook first. So this is exciting. You're in a new venue this year. So, Kristen, talk about the move from the Nugget to the GSR and the welcome we got yesterday from the GSR family and, and you know, how that's portending for the future of, of Tailhook. Yeah, it's been amazing. The staff here has been outstanding. Uh, Mr. Morello, the owner of the GSR, has welcomed us with open arms, and it was such a great opportunity for us to finally move over here to the GSR. As our membership has grown, uh, you know, we've had numerous wonderful years with the Nugget, but we just kind of got to a point that we were bigger than they could handle and we had hit as large as we could go. So moving over here, we have more exhibitors than we have ever had in the past. There's 122 exhibitors here this year uh, and Chaser was able to give uh, our longtime exhibitors a little bit more room and sold out the rest of the space within a week. So that was really exciting. Um, we have we sold out all the rooms here as well and it's it's been great because we have everyone under well, not, not everyone, but almost everyone under one roof instead of uh, spread out like we used to be. So it's been really cool to, to have a space that we can continue, continue to develop and grow with. And uh, it's, it's going to be good. We're going to see all the, the JLs tomorrow night, too, I hope. <laughs> and uh, something that folks may not know is that for a long time, many of the JOs would actually come stay at the GSR and then attend the symposium at the Nugget. Right. Um, and now the fact that we've got everyone under one roof is really a unique experience because it's going to we hope to facilitate a lot more interaction between the JOs and like we have so many incredible reunion groups that come to hook and to, one of the best parts and one of the things I love most about naval aviation is the the knowledge sharing and the sea stories and now that everyone's back under one roof you know we can have all those folks together sharing those stories and and that's what makes naval aviation unique that's what makes it fun and we hope that uh, the move to the GSR is really going to facilitate a lot and in between you know hitting the craps tables or, or having, you know, maybe they can go and check out a symposium and, and get that good information and be part of that knowledge transfer. Yeah. So what are some of the uh, panel discussions happening today or tomorrow? Yeah, I think uh, right now safety just kicked off. So uh, talking about the initiatives that we have in place to make sure that we can do this job and do it safely and don't break any of our, our equipment while doing it. Uh, then later on today, we have two of our marquee panels. One's arming the warfighter. So kind of how we take... Uh, new weapon systems and software and implement them into the fleet and I'm really excited for the first time we're going to have uh, a panel called From the Front Lines and we are going to take the group that just came off the Ike and did some really cool mission sets overseas and discuss what their challenges were and how things worked out uh, for them when they went over the horizon so hopefully that is something we can continue to do and take whatever aircraft carrier just came back in because you know Everybody wants to know what's going on and, you know, out there and how, especially with industry here, you know, wh what tools did work well for them, what tools would they think they need in the future, and, and it's great to have that uh, interaction. And then later on today, we have the, the flag panel, which is always fun. So the poor admirals lose their staffs and just get uh, direct fire questions from the junior officers in the fleet. So uh, always wish those guys good luck and yeah. uh, get to answer some of the hard questions that you don't always have the opportunity to ask directly of the admirals. Yeah, I, I didn't mention it, but the theme of this year's hook is be ready, right? So past themes in the last few years I've been here, you know, there was the 100th anniversary of naval aviation, there was a, a, a look back on Desert Shield, Desert Storm, there was a look back on the Vietnam War, so it's in some past ones it's been a focus on, you know, past wars or anniversaries or those sorts of things, but this year's theme is looking at the, the future fight, looking at today's readiness, what are we doing now to prepare for what you know what faces us and as you said uh the panel discussion later today with the folks from the ike just back from deployment um in the red sea protecting merchant shipping 
uh, doing land attack strikes on, against the Houthis, also protecting in, in the air-to-air -air battle against uh, uh, incoming drones and ballistic missiles and cruise missiles. And so there's a lot going on for the Eisenhower. So Admiral Miguez, is he going to be part? He was a striker commander. He's part of that panel today. Yes, sir. Okay, so he wrote a piece in the uh, July issue of Proceedings, uh, some of the things that they face. So it'd be, be great to see him on the panel. Um, so that's great. Um, so yesterday, uh, we, we interviewed Admiral Brophy, Commander of Naval Air Training, and he talked about undergraduate aviator training. Uh, and Kristen, you're the CEO of the West Coast Super Hornet FRS, so that's graduate training. So after they get their wings, they come to you. Uh, one of the things that Admiral Brophy mentioned was that uh, as of about three or four months ago, student naval aviators are no longer carrier calling, CQing, uh, at the boat in uh, training command jets, right? So now they're doing their initial uh, carrier calls in Super Hornets. How's that going? Oh, really well. I, I know that's probably sounds a little surprising, but you know, thanks to all of the test community that you know created PLM, or you know, we say Magic Carpet uh, as a nickname for that. Precision landing modes. Yep. Yes, sir. So they're. I've done a couple of boat debts now with some of the kids that have never, you know, flown at the aircraft carrier. And honestly, on day one, their first night trap looks as good as, like, the best night trap I ever had. Wow. I haven't had my heart race once watching three rag CQs. And everything is just very calm, smooth, and predictable. Um, there's obviously mistakes they can still make. Uh, it's obviously a, a dangerous environment, and things can uh, go wrong quickly, and that's why we have the LSO team there. But um, it's the hours and stuff it saves from a training command, and we still t teach them how to fly the pattern and how the processes work, but we can really just nug down when they get to the FRS, and we've been seeing pretty good uh, results from there. And what's the production rate? How many new uh, student Super Hornet pilots and uh, and Wizzos come through the, the FRS every year? Uh, we're meant to do about six uh, uh, six classes a year, and those classes range. Uh, Ten is probably the max we would want to take, and we yeah. end up plus or minus a couple of that, depending on how classes ebbed or flowed. So uh, the T-45 production has caught up now, so we're starting to see full class sizes yeah. again. So we are, we are very busy at the FRS right now. <laughs> Got it. All right. And you've been in that in that job for about a year now. So a little over a year. I got there in April. And then I'll probably early spring, mid-spring is, I think, when I'm going to have to finally move on. So I should give reprieve to all my junior officers who are sick of listening to me now. <laughs> Has the Navy hinted at what comes next for you? Uh, I am just keeping fingers crossed to see what happens to the major command board. So I'd like to stick around, but right. that's over to the Navy now. So Thanks just along for the ride. <laughs> all right. So uh, Tugboat, talk a little bit about... Uh, what it was like going through Top Gun. So you're a recent Top Gun grad, and uh, you mentioned yesterday when we bumped into each other in the hall, it was pretty intense. Uh, so what, what was the phrase you used uh, when we were talking about it yesterday? Yeah, I, uh, it's the most fun I'd ever want to have again. Um, it was incredible training, and the it's a true credit, I think, to the, to the professionalism of the staff there and everyone up at Nautic for uh, the realism, the pace, and really the focus on uh, individual execution that then builds up to much larger evolutions, and I think one of the one of the things that I was most impressed by is how, uh, you know, in keeping with our theme this year of be ready, how the Top Gun course is evolving to meet the high end threat and prepare strike fighter tactics instructors to train to that. So uh, we had a wonderful class, uh, we had a wonderful instructor cadre. I learned an incredible amount. I grew a lot as an aviator. You know, they push you, and they they make you really think deeply about how you fly, the decisions that you're making, so everything from your basic mechanical execution, how you set up your radar, etc., all the way up to like big picture decision making, preparing you to help, you know, execute a long range maritime strike or execute an offensive counter air type mission. So uh, it was an incredible experience. I felt very fortunate to be selected because my career timing wasn't perfect. Yep. Uh, and now I get to be at the West Coast Weapons School helping to instruct the fleet. So. Uh, we were just able, we just finished up an integrated ARP where we were preparing an air wing for a deployment. Uh, and what's unique now in keeping with the high end fight is that we are now really focusing a lot more on integration. So bringing multiple aspects of the air wing together. That way we can all train as the team that we are going to fight as because this isn't just going to be a Super Hornet fight. It's not just going to be a Navy fight. It's going to be a joint fight. Yeah. And that's what we're focused on preparing folks for is, is that sort of integration. And no matter when the flag goes up, if the flag goes up, we're ready to work together efficiently as a team. 
Got it. Uh, uh, F-35s now part of top the Top Gun uh, syllabus? Are they, are they sending squadron uh, F-35s out there? Guys from the, uh, that's four F-35C squadrons that are now operational at Lemoore, right? So yeah, they're at, top, uh, top Gun has absolutely integrated the F-35, so there is a Top Gun instructor cadre up there that are uh, F-35C. They're actually, a, they'll be a mix of uh, Navy and Marine Corps, since the Marine Corps also has okay. variants there. Yep. Um, but they're absolutely been integrated. There was, uh, and there were three F-35 students in my class, two Marines and one Navy, one of whom is now at the West Coast Weapons School with me. So, great. and that's another great opportunity where, while they had their own, uh, in a building block approach, they had their own F-35 training objectives, and we had our own F-18 training objectives near the end of the Top Gun course and some of our culminating events. We're all working together, mission planning together, sort of in a in a much more high-end way. And, and again, building on that theme of integration, being ready for the high-end fight against the pacing threat to bring all our capabilities to bear. Okay, that's cool. And uh, you mentioned West Coast uh, Weapons School at Lemoore. So you're there now as a Super Hornet guy, but is it an integrated F-35 Super Hornet weapon school now? Yeah, so the idea, there have been, uh, just again, as the production, I think, for F-35 pilots has, uh, uh, a lot of it was initially transition folks from the F-18 into the F-35 community, but now you've got uh, essentially like organic, you know, the equivalent of what would have gone through Dragon's pipeline and training and have grown up only ever flying the F-35. Yeah. So I think as those folks come through and then uh, get selected for Top Gun, we've been staffing up at the weapons school. So that's something that we're working on to be able to help, again, support the fleet with check rides, support the fleet with their, um, they're basically, they have a different strike fighter tactics syllabus than we do, but again, helping the fleet train and integrate is something that we're really working on too and supporting uh for air wings that do have F-35s integrated, again, changing the syllabus to take advantage and provide everyone training. Got it. And your uh, JO tour, which you finished like a year and a half ago or so, right? You were on Lincoln. Uh, I forget which air wing, but did, did that air wing also have F-35s in it? Yeah, we did. We were uh, CAG-9, uh, and we had uh, VMFA 314, so the Black Knights, uh, which was just an incredible group of guys. I still... Uh, and so again, it was a Marine F-35 C yep, squadron. Yep, they were embarked, and it was really unique to have. So there were Marine LSOs. You know, we yeah. I got to go, uh, you know, be on the platform waving with those guys, and it was great to have, see that integration with them. Uh, and they, you know, obviously the Marines have their own culture. The ready room looked a little bit different, but uh, you know, we all would get together at the officer club, share a beer in port, and they were great to fly with. You know, and it it, it was again a testament to how we're transitioning air wings to be more prepared for the high-end fight, that we could bring all the capabilities to bear yeah. and focus on those different mission sets, which which were a substantial factor on our Westpac deployment. Got it. Uh, might not, not be fair to ask you, but I'm curious about uh, integration of MQ-25. Is that close? Are we imminent? Are we... Uh... You would know more than I do, okay. I guess. I'm, so that's not something that the, the weapon school is necessarily tracking. I, Got uh, it. I'm, wouldn't have the latest. Uh, I'll ask, I'll ask the yeah. air boss tomorrow then. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> I'm all about it. Know. More gas is always good. More right? gas so in the air. More gas is and, always good. And, and, and less uh, five wet missions for the yeah. Super Hornets, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, if I good. can take a jet out and do BFM instead of a tanking one, I'm not going to be upset. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> all right. Um, saved rounds. Uh, any other things on your mind? Thanks for having us. Yeah. It's been fun. Great to have you. Great to be at, at Hook again. And, um, yeah, good luck with the rest of the program. Cool. Thank you. All Thank right. You. Well, that wraps up another episode of the Proceedings Podcast here from Hook 24. It's great to be here in Reno. And until next episode, remember, victory begins at the Naval Institute.